of me. What is it saying? It's saying that men don't point you to the book. Books point you to the man. So the first phase of comprehension is coming from the word in the book. So you open this up not to stay in it, but you open it up to begin to learn how to open up the man. To study the man and his way and his function and his orientation of mind and his motives for why he does things and his priority system. And when one begins to open up the man and sees the inner workings of his mind, understands the priority list, his belief system, and begins to duplicate those things, then you have used the Bible and Quran properly. But if the Bible and Quran lead you in it, then we're not studying right. The Bible and Quran is supposed to lead you out of it, into the mind, the heart and soul of a man that the Bible and Quran are a sign of. The new man. All oh, praise and teach you Allah. This new man, that's the first one off the assembly line of this new man making process established by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, not on the island of Pilon, but on Stony Island. Not trying to grab weaker with weaker and marry him on lighter with lighter to produce a opposer to the will of God, but to produce gods all over again. This first one off the assembly line that is the new man, that if we put him on, we become new men and women. He says in his statement, he said, we are actually living in the mind of God, but blinded. If there were no books to read, you could start reading from the tiniest insect to the blades of grass, to the plants, to the birds, the beasts, the fowl, all the way out to the far planets. And he said, your eyes would roll back tighter. For we would see that we know so little and there's so much more that needs to be, that we can learn. Y'all still with me? Well, I thought about this statement because he made it in August, on August 27th in verse 251. But he also made it in the address put on the new man. He said the same thing. And normally, according to the pattern of God, that whenever you begin to hear messengers of God repeat a thing, they're not repeating a thing because they ran out of something to say. No, it says, and we repeat our messages that you might be what? Mindful. So when something is repeated by a servant of Allah who has inside of his mind over 76 quintillion miles of supreme wisdom, he don't have to repeat himself. If he does, then he's repeating thy messages that we might be mindful. So I thought that in closing that we would look at this concept of nation building from an insect. Y'all with me? In the book of Proverbs, in the 6th chapter, the 6th verse, it says, Study the ant, thou Negro. No, it don't say that. It don't say that. <laughs> it don't say that. I just make sure y'all pay attention. But it does say, Study the ant, thou slugger. And sometimes them kind of go hand in hand. Because we the real Lazarus of the Bible. Buried in a shallow grave. Not dead, but so asleep that we look dead. In fact, we are dead. But Lazarus, broken down, means lazy or us. What y'all think? So, no, let's go back. Let's see, read it. Proverbs 6, verse 6. It says, now you do know that Proverbs was was written by a man named Solomon. Don't you know that Solomon and the minister have a lot in common? In fact, the name Solomon really is not a name as much as it is a title. Saul, S-O-L, means soul or soul earth, which means the sun. So Solomon really is not a prophet that lived back in the day talking. It's the son of man talking. Maybe that's why it's called Proverbs. A verb is that which describes actions. 
pro means in advance. So these are actions in advance being spoken by not a man back then, but a son of man. Solomon and the minister got a lot in common. Solomon was David's choice and the minister was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's choice. Solomon was set in the seat of David to be the next king and the minister was the only one set in that seat. David used to drive Solomon around on his mule. Did you hear me? And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad used to drive the minister around in his car. Did you hear me? When David was made, or Solomon was made king, the trumpet was sounded. On the corner of the paper, when the minister started the paper, the trumpet is there too. So there's some similarities here. Would you agree? Son of man. The new man. Y'all right? It says, from our book that we received, August 27, verse 251, if there were no books to read, you could start reading from the tiniest insect. An ant is a pretty small insect. It says, study the ant and learn of her ways and become or be wise. Well, what's about an ant that connects to you and me with nation building? Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Ants always work in a collective manner. There ain't no envy or jealousy among the ants. In fact, not one ant knows what the other ant's assignment is. No ant knows the bigger picture. All ants know is what they were told to do. And they ain't looking around to see what other ants are doing or ain't doing or envying or jealous of somebody for some position. They are busy, committed to the task at hand. So they worked their assignment with 100% focus. I wonder what would happen if we was like that in nation building. All oh, praise is due to Allah. No envy. No jealousy. Focus on our task. Ants are immune to personal pain. When one steps on an ant, the ant doesn't feel no pain. Neither do the other ants get sad from the stepping of that ant, on that ant. They are immune to personal pain. Why? Because if they were to feel personal pain, then they would not be as committed to the goal of the collective. They would be kind of focused on securing themselves as an individual. Well, I wonder what would happen if we made our prayer, our sacrifice, our life and our death all for Allah. We wouldn't care that much about what happens to self. We will be about what was good for the nation, what was good for the will of God, what was good for the group, what was good for our people, what was good for the world. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The ants are beautiful. Have, have, you, ever, have you ever kicked over an ant mound? You did that before? When you came back, the ants weren't outside your porch with no picket signs, was it? They wouldn't, was it? They wouldn't talk, talk about, um, Ngawa, we want ant power. They wasn't doing that, was it? Matter of fact, you didn't see the ants with their heads down, moving real slow, talking about, woe is me. When you came back, they just moved a few inches over and were moving faster than what they were moving before you kicked their mound over and have already started building a new map. In other words, they don't let nothing or no one get in their way. Their word is their bond regardless to whom or what. What if we were like that with nation building? All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. The ant, the ant has the be attitude. The ant's not selfish. If an ant finds food, he don't get the food and hide it. Like the Negro ant would do. Negro ant find the food in. Try to tuck it. No, but the ant is so selfless that if it finds food, it eats what it can. Carries back to the other ants in the colony whatever it can. And if it leaves, if it's still more left in the pile, it will instead of just...